A hanging sign on the ceiling of the airport suddenly fell down. Numerous glass shards instantly fell on the boy. The boy fell to the ground on the spot. A man emerged from the crowd. After a brief examination, he decided that the boy's jugular vein had been cut. He asked a passerby to find a clean handkerchief. He then pressed it against the wound on the boy's neck. At this point, a young man who was watching said that this was not the right thing to do. I'm saving his life, he was bleeding out. Sean said that if he had been saving an adult, then the place he pressed was the right place. But the boy was not an adult. The boy's wound he was pressing on would have prevented him from breathing. Sean walked towards the boy and moved the man's hand up a little bit from the wound he was pressing on. Then the boy did start breathing on his own. Sean then put both of the boy's arms flat. By this time, the boy's veins appeared in his eyes. Sean briefly determined that the boy's chest pressure had changed due to a dilated vein in his left arm. Even though the boy could now breathe on his own, his life was still in danger. The easiest way to save the boy was to correct the pressure in his chest. Sean then asked passersby for help and asked who had a knife with a 10 centimeters blade in his hand. He heard that the knife had been taken away by the staff during the security check. Sean told the man to give the boy artificial respiration. He then went to the security checkpoint to look for the knife. Of course his demand for a knife was not met. Security said he would report it and give him man application. But now the boy was in danger of something. So Sean picks up the knife and runs off in a strange position. He didn't get far before the security guards jumped him. Had the mother of the injured boy not come forward to defend him, Sean would have been taken away by security for investigation. Sean assembled a strong drink and a catheter and a sharp knife and began to prepare for the operation. He first placed several items on the boy's belly, then he poured the spirit on top of the boy's stomach to sterilize it. Then he put on gloves and disinfected them in the same way. Three tenths of the catheter was cut with a small knife. A long catheter and a short one were then inserted into the bowel and sealed with tape. A simple treatment device was created. Sean then used the knife to cut open the boy's chest cavity. The catheter was then inserted into the chest cavity. Bubbles started to come out of the bottle. When the man saw it, he was curious and asked what it was. Sean explained that it was a simple one-way valve. After the air is removed from the boy's lungs, the residual wine in the bottle can prevent the gas from flowing back. The boy finally resumed breathing after some simple manipulation by Sean. The crowd applauds Sean's medical skills. He saves a boy's life and takes him to the opera operating room. Sean followed the doctors all the way and asked the hospital to do an echocardiogram on him. The doctor took a look at the previous data and said that the boy's signs were normal. She then planned to go straight back to the operating room, but Sean was still following her and told her to make sure she did this test on the boy. Dr. Brown turned around and warned Sean that he would be thrown out if he made any more noise. She turns around and runs to the operating room, and Sean hesitates for a second to go into the operating room. Not surprisingly, he was asked to leave the hospital. Sean was stopped by the doorman as soon as it tried to enter through the revolving door. Dr. Melendez, who was in surgery, noticed that something was wrong. The boy's blood pressure was slowly dropping. They couldn't find a reason why it was happening. Dr. Melendez asks why Dr. Brown just said he wanted to do an echocardiogram. Dr. Brown repeated Sean's words and emphasized that Sean did not say why the test was done. The two men had to come out and ask Sean why he was doing the test. Sean said that the boy might have a pericardial effusion. This would prevent the heart from working properly. Dr. Melendez called the surgery to confirm that the test results did not reveal this problem. Sean was the only one who was sure that the boy had a pericardial effusion. He quickly went over the boy's organogram in his head and tried to find the problem. Dr. Brown took Sean into the operating room and asked him to see the results of the instruments behind the glass. Again? With the aid of the instruments, Sean quickly found the problem. There was a slight collapse of the boy's right atrium. There might be glass fragments in there. When the doctors heard this, they started trying to find the problem inside the heart and they managed to pinch a glass fragment out of the heart. The surgeons looked at Sean. His ability was recognized by all. He was able to get an interview for his excellent medical skills. But Sean is an autistic patient. Hospital leaders had concerns about hiring him. What if Sean had an autistic episode during the procedure? This woman was only constipated. But Sean recommended that she have one of her healthy kidneys removed. Because his said Anna had a tumor in her intestines. And it was definitely a malignant tumor. Anna was stunned to hear about the malignant tumor. She asked if the tumor would kill her. The doctors around her rushed to reassure her and said that the test results were not yet available. Only Sean was still dumb enough to continue to affirm that it was definitely a malignant tumor. 
Several doctors called Sean outside the room to calm the patient. They said that Sean's statement would scare the patient, but Sean said that if they did not intervene with the patient, then Anna's tumor is likely to progress to an advanced stage. Isn't that scary? Dr. Brown said that fear is not good for patients. Anna's surgery is scheduled soon. They were going to take some samples and test them before making a decision. But when the doctors opened Anna's abdomen, they found a much larger tumor than the one they had examined. They couldn't even find the abdominal aorta. They couldn't stop the bleeding in this case, and the tumor couldn't be removed. After all, the patient would have died within minutes if the aorta had bled. Just when Dr. Melendez didn't know what to do, Sean was passing by the operating room. Dr. Melendez told Sean about Anna's condition. He asked Sean to call for a biopsy and wait until they knew for sure if removing the tumor from Anna's body would affect the aorta. The test results came back quickly. The tumor was indeed on the edge of the artery. The situation was not conducive for them to continue Anna's surgery, so the doctor said to stop the operation. They regret to tell Anna that she has three months to live. But then Sean started the most amazing operation. He simulates and watches the structure of the body in his head. Then he came up with a solution for the surgery. If Anna's left kidney was removed so that they would not be blocked during the surgery and Anna would still have a kidney that would work, this means that the doctors don't have to blindly cut the tumor. They would be able to save Anna's life. But that's just an idea. Sean had suggested that it was up to Dr. Melendez to decide whether or not to implement it. So Dr. Melendez was willing to try this to save a life. They cut out Anna's kidney. The doctors were able to see a clear view immediately. There were some very senior doctors in the room. They quickly removed the tumor from Anna's body with a clear view of the organ. A healthy liver can survive for 8 hours after leaving the body. If the liver is put back into the body within 8 hours, it can still function normally. Today Sean needs to leave the hospital for work. Someone needs to have a liver transplant. But the transplanted liver is in another location. They need to take a helicopter to get the liver there. When they arrived at the target hospital, they found that the liver had already been taken out. This is not in order. The doctor explained that the liver had already been scheduled for transplantation before that. But the recipient died before the transplant was performed. The incubator showed the last time the liver remained active. The actual time the liver can survive is subtracted from the time of surgery. Sean and Dr. Brown determined that the liver didn't have long to live and immediately returned to the flight. But the pilot said the helicopter could not take off now because of the foggy weather. They had to switch to another vehicle to leave. In order to get the liver back to the hospital as soon as possible, the two men got into a police car to go back. But on the way, they found that the temperature inside the incubator was rising. This will cause the liver to lose its activity quickly to cool down the inside of the incubator. Dr. Brown put a lot of ice cream into the incubator and hoped it would lower the temperature. But the large ice cubes did not cool down quickly enough. The temperature of the incubator was still not guaranteed. The two men decided to put ice into the incubator and bury the liver directly with ice. At this point, the temperature inside the incubator really began to drop. But it didn't end there because the previous hospital did not completely replace the blood with a solution when they removed the liver. A lot of blood remained in the frowning state and clotted. This would reduce the life expectancy of the liver. Sean decided to operate on the liver on the road to save it. He rinsed the blood clots from the liver. The two of them worked together to clamp out the clots in the liver. Sean then injected a solution into the liver vein that would keep it active. This is how he managed to save the liver. But as the two men struggled to get back to the hospital with the liver, Dr. Brown received a call that the transplant recipient had been drinking for three months and could not be operated on. The liver will be reserved for the next person who can do the transplant. The doctor from the hospital next door came to take the liver away. Dr. Brown was a little upset, but Sean said it was a good day because they managed to save a life. Dr. Brown thought that at least the liver was not wasted.